Welcome to this AGX Dynamics for Unreal tutorial. In today's video, we're going to talk about terrains. We're going to cover the very basics of terrains, what we can do with them, how to set them up, how we add shovels to them so that we can dig and actually deform the terrain. So the demos you're seeing here, you can actually download them by going to the AGX top menu here and then going demo projects. Uh, also, we have a tutorial hallways demo project that you can download from the marketplace. Uh, it also features a terrain level. So that level is actually made to explain the different concepts of terrain. So definitely check that out as well. So in this video, we will basically start from scratch. So here I have an almost empty project uh, with a level that's, we only have some lighting set up. Um, the first step here is to create a landscape. And the landscape is what will be rendered in our viewport. The AGX terrain does not render itself. Uh, it simply talks to a render material assigned to the landscape. Uh, I'm going to talk about that and how that works a little bit later. The resolution of the landscape is very important. So the resolution of the landscape determines the resolution of the terrain. So I'm going to set this to something like 15 by 15 in X and Y, meaning that the voxel grid of the AGX terrain will be 15 centimeters. The overall size I think is fine, so I am going to press create here. And just to have something to dig into, I'm going to select the sculpt tool and just make some something like that. So at this point, AGX Dynamics for Unreal doesn't actually know about this landscape yet. And I, I can showcase this by just throwing in a rigid body. Um, let's add a sphere shape to that. And I'm going to let this fall. So what you saw there is that the sphere just fell right through the landscape. That's where the terrain comes in. So let's now add an AGX terrain. Coming down here to the details panel from the terrain actor, we can select a source landscape. So we have to reference the landscape from the terrain actor. Here we get a pop-up saying that the selected landscape doesn't use the dynamic material instance property uh, and the terrain basically asks us if we want it to enable that for us. I'm going to press yes here and we can now see that we have some, some type of bounding area and this is actually the extent of the AGX terrain. We can adjust this in from the de details panel like so. And what will happen now when I press play is that the terrain will read the heights of the landscape and create an AGX Dynamics native terrain for us. So we can see that if I press play, now we get collisions and it will fall over this edge here since the extent of the terrain ended right here. We can also enable infinite bounds then it will find the edges of the landscape and just use the whole landscape. If you're having really large landscapes, there might be issues with memory usage and that's where terrain paging comes in. And I will talk about terrain paging a little bit later in this video. For now, I'm gonna leave it like this. So we're gonna look closer here in the details panel of the terrain. I'm not gonna cover all these properties in detail, um, you can check out the user manual which has more information. One really important property is the terrain material. And the terrain material describes how the terrain bulk will behave. So with the plugin you get a library of calibrated materials here. So I can just select gravel one for example. You can of course create your own terrain materials. Uh, if we open this up we see that we have a bunch of different uh, properties that we can set. These can be adjusted to fit the actual terrain you want. By the way, if you're not seeing these built-in materials, you might have to come to the content browser settings and selecting the show plugin content. 
that's just a quick tip for you. Uh, the shape material describes the behavior of the surface of the terrain. Things like friction, uh, surface viscosity, and so forth. Uh, just like they do on regular shapes. Um, here we see something important. So we see that we have shovels and shovel components. The reason we have two of these now uh, is that the shovels is actually the old way of, of specifying shovels. This is deprecated as we can see in the tooltip. So I recommend highly that you're using the shovel components. We are going to create a shovel component and we have to reference that component right here. So the next step is to create a shovel. I'm going to start off by just creating an empty actor. Let's call this shovel. And if I search shovel here, we see that we have an, an AGX shovel component. This shovel component uh, needs a rigid body that it references. So I will create it as a child. It doesn't have to be a child to the shovel component. Uh, the rigid body can actually be in another actor. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but for simplicity, I'm going to build it right here in the same actor. I'm also going to add two box shapes. going to angle this slightly so as you notice this is not going to be an overly pretty shovel uh, normally you will have oh, we got some c finding there uh, normally you will have a, a mesh that represents your represents your shovel but just for demonstration purposes i'm going to create it create a, a very very simple uh, shovel here uh, let's rotate that like so So we have created a shovel. It's not actually set up. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. I am going to come to the terrain actor, scroll down to the shovel components list here. And from here, I'm going to reference the shovel. So I'm going to find my shovel actor and select the component, the AGX shovel component. So if I press play now, well, the shovel will fall down, of course. So I'm going to select the shovel body and do a little trick just so that we can get some type of digging motion or a plowing motion, I should say. So I'm going to specify this to be kinematic and give it a velocity. This would be minus. So we see that the shovel is moving through the terrain, but nothing really happens. We don't get deformation and we don't get particles. So the reason for that is that we have actually not set up the shovel yet. Uh, so coming to the shovel component, uh, we see that we need to reference a rigid body. So here in the dropdown, I can select shovel body. Shovel properties is something that determines how the shovel behaves. Uh, I'm actually going to clear this for now and we will just get the default shovel properties. And these three properties, the top edge, cutting edge and cutting direction are really important. That lets Ajax Dynamics know how the shovel looks basically. So specifying the top edge, we do this with frames. So we have a start and an end frame. If you have created your model in Momentum, for example, you can use observer frames to specify the start and end position of all these edges and setting that up will be very, very quick and easy. And uh, now we, we don't have that, so I'm gonna do it manually. So it will be a little bit tedious, but you'll get the basic idea. So I'm gonna select the shovel body as parent and I'm gonna give, you, give this an offset. So this is the top edge. And now I can actually select these in the viewport and place them at the top like so.
something like this. So we have the top edge not perfectly aligned there, uh, the bottom edge and the cutting direction. Uh, as I said, really recommend doing this with observer frames. You will get the positions precise and it will be quick and easy to set up. I'm going to press play again now that the shovel has been set up. And we see that we do get particles, which is good, but we do not get any deformation. And the reason we don't get any deformation is because the displacement rendering is done in the render material of the landscape, and we have not assigned that yet. So I'm going to select the landscape now. And for the landscape material, I'm going to select the built-in deformable landscape gravel. And what happens now is the terrain actually writes height offsets to a render target, a landscape displacement map. And this render target is then used by this render material here. So if we open this up, we see that we have, we have logic to basically calculate the world position offset and also uh, the normals that will change as we dig into this landscape. And all of this is based on this displacement map right here. Uh, if you want to use your own render material and dig into that, that is also fine. There is a video linked in the description to this video explaining how you can do that. I should mention also that the reason we got particles is because if we select the terrain actor, scrolling down, we see that it references a particle system, a Niagara particle system. This is currently pointing to a particle system that comes with AGX Dynamics 4 Unreal. You can use that if you like. You can, of course, also create your own. And what the AGX terrain will do in runtime is to write particle data to this particle system using the Niagara data interface from C++. This is covered in the user manual in more details. So look into that if you want to create your own particle system or if you want to use this particle system and just tweak it, change out the mesh or the appearance of the particles. There is some type of bug in Unreal, which means that I cannot see that we are actually having this render material here. I'm gonna just toggle this property back and forth once. And now we see that we do get the rendering that we expect. I can press play. And now we see that indeed we get the deformation in the landscape. So lastly, I want to mention how to use terrain paging. So coming here to the terrain actor again, uh, this time I'm gonna use the infinite bound setting. This is not required, but it makes it a better demonstration, I think, having a, a quite large landscape like this. You can, of course, use much larger landscapes as well. So I'm going to scroll down here in the details panel all the way down to the bottom. And here we see that we can enable terrain paging. And if we look closely, we will see some type of grid here on the landscape. It's not very easy to see with this uh, specific render material, but I hope you can see this these, these grid lines. So what happens here is that these are actually tiles and in runtime these tiles will be paged in and out from memory when they are needed and when they are not needed. And the position of the shovel will be tracked so that the tiles are tiled in and out depending on where the shovel is. Uh, we have terrain paging settings. We can specify the overlap for these tiles. Uh, there needs to be some overlap that is that has to do with making the formations between tiles smooth. Uh, the size of the overlap depends, among other things, of the cutting edge of the shovel. This is described in more details in the user manual. Um, the default setting is often OK. The tile size is just how large each tile will be. Uh, this can be selected depending on your performance and memory needs. If you have a vehicle, for example, that does not have a shovel, you can of course use that on a paging terrain as well. There you can just track a rigid body within that vehicle and tiles will be loaded in and out the same way. So if I press play now, I detach 
and select the terrain actor. We see now that we actually get tiles. These uh, brightly white lines, these are tiles that are tiled in. And these ones that are gray here in the back, these are not tiled in currently. So you can specify for your shovel a specific uh, radius that will be used to determine when tiles should be loaded and unloaded. These can be specified here in the preload radius and required radius. You can read more about them in the user manual. So that's it for this tutorial. This was uh, pretty quick. The terrain is quite complicated. There are a lot of things you can tweak and change and play around with. Definitely check out the demos that you can download for free. Also look into the user manual. Thank you for watching and see you next time.